Oh, hi, people of YouTube. I am leaving for the Rust Belt Ramble in like 38 hours, probably. Maybe a little less. So I'm working on the 244 because pff, why not? Uh, I think I'm probably going to do maybe a little of this. Maybe some of this. We'll just put it back in. Look at that, it's done. I'm for sure going to be doing this. So since a bunch of the parts that have been on back order for like 18 million and a half days are finally getting here, I'm going to start knocking some stuff out and then uh, the Dressy GT can just survive, probably. So, uh, let's get rolling. A couple little things I'm going to try to focus on today is this door handle. It's kind of got a lot of the dirt and works about there only. And uh, this seat is, well... It's really, the foam is really good. Like, it feels nice sitting on it, but the leather itself is shit and dried and cracked because it sat in the sun for a decade. So until I can find either material that matches the, the side and the back seats, or I can find a good seat that fits that, or a good matching seat for the driver, I'm going to throw on this seat. Um, my buddy Michael got this out in Detroit for me, and so I am going to try to use some suds box and some other little cleaner stuff that I've got and see if I can't shine it up a little bit and make it look halfway decent. And I'm going to throw this seat in here, and then swap out this crappy door lot handle that doesn't work. And maybe some other things when I'm in there. We'll see what happens. Well, I realized I didn't have a good brush, so I used this stuff right here, and uh, overall I would say improve. It's a little bit dirty up here yet, I probably should make another pass with it at some point in time, but I'm not planning on keeping this seat in here forever, so I'm not super worried about it, but anyway, let's go rip this old seat out and get her in here. Well, I got the seat out, and then uh, looking at the carpet, I was like, yeah, I should really vacuum it out, I should really go grab the three-wheeled shop vac. And then if I'm thinking, might as well do that, I might as well clean the floor mats. Since these things, I didn't clean them last time because I was lazy. So, well, with the power of some uh, editing magic and the internet and wizardry and all those things, I'm going to make everything look nice right about... Whoa, whoa, no, too soon, internet magic, too soon! Alrighty, got the interior all cleaned out. Got the floor mats all shined up, looking a ton nicer. I ran some... Uh, Chemical Guys VRP, it's called on the dashboard up here, because basically this stuff's all super, super dried out, and I ran some over the top of here. Kind of give some life in the plastics, because everything's dry from sitting in the sun for a decade or so. And I happened to uh, get this off. I tightened up the uh, handle thread like about three turns around, which makes the handle work quite a bit better. But while I was digging through here, I happened to find some bonus items. I don't know how well we can see this in here, but a lot of pine needles, and unfortunately, I can get my camera to focus on it properly. Um, this is going to be a terrible angle, but yeah, it's not really picking up. But there's a Scotia rust starting right here. So I'm going to vacuum everything out in here. I'm going to oil the inside of this up, kind of give it some life. I may end up popping up all the door panels and pulling all these out because I really don't want this to happen again, or to get worse, I should say. So onto that now, I guess. All right, we are officially back together. Found a bunch of pine needles in the bottom, got them all vacuumed out. I think I'm gonna have to re-clean this door panel because I got it all dirty with my dirty mitts. But, got the floor mat shined up nice, got the seat looking a lot better than it did. And uh, some of the plastics, I got some of the plastics cleaned up from this stuff. I think I mentioned that earlier in this part, but I'm doing this so spaced out and everything like that. I don't really know what's who's when, where's and how's. So, I think that's going to be all for the interior. I may pull all four door panels off though right now for fun and just see if there's any other pine needles in here. Because I'm kind of nervous about that, if I'm being honest. But, I don't know. We'll see. I got the mirror all messed up. I should probably sit in here again. Get the mirror readjusted and the seat adjusted. Beep, beep, beep. Look at that Volvo. <whistles> Covered in rust. So now I'm moving out of the trunk seal leak that you guys saw a little bit in the intro. Um... I threw my GoPro in the trunk, hit record, and, uh...
Checked it out from a couple of different angles, and it seems like a majority of the leak is coming from somewhere over Yeah. I ran my hose over at the car for not very long, and it just kind of drenched everything. It's definitely leaking from somewhere back in here, which seems to be potentially from this pinch weld right here, but I'm not 100% positive. It feels okay underneath it, but I'm going to start with the simplest and easiest, and ow, water dripped on my neck cheapest theoretically solution and i'm just gonna replace this whole trunk seal so i have a seal coming right now from vp auto parts which i want to give a huge shout out to uh david bellows on youtube uh he's mentioned them a few times in videos past and uh finally after one of the most recent 164 videos of his i watched i decided yeah, i'll check their website out and see what they got finally and they had a trunk seal for like 38 bucks i want to say easily four times cheaper than IPD wants for one because I my initial plan was to go to a junkyard and try to pull one but the likelihood of a trunk seal on a car that's been sitting at a salvage yard for forever not very likely that it's going to be good so super stoked on this uh, that should be here I believe in like a week or so which will probably be gone for the rally at that point in time so just trust that I probably put that on um, this, I sadly don't have too much time until I gotta get going, because I really should be packing right now and not dinking out in the garage, but... Dinking around in the garage is way better than packing, trust me. Alrighty, well, dialing in the suspension issue right now, um, for starters, I really regret doing the trunk floor situation thing before I curl underneath here, because my back is drenched, and everything is dripping water on my face. And that was definitely a 17.4 IQ moment. Alrighty, digging through everything in through here. It looks like the bushings for the um, panhard or panard or however you prefer it to be labeled. Bushings are no good, but everything else looks to be very much new. It's really hard for me to get a good camera angle on these trailing arm bushings, but these trailing arm bushings look very nice. The bushings for the torque rods are seemingly very, very nice. In fact, they even look polyurethane, but I'm not 100% positive, but I would assume red means poly, because I've never seen red rubber that's not some form of fancy rubber, I guess you could say. Um, it has almost new shocks on the back. I don't recognize this brand off hand. But it feels nice. Sorry for the camera angles. I'm just kind of shoving my phone wherever I can make it fit. So I have a um, Panhard bar bushing kit that are poly that is polyurethane that I had ordered for my wagon. But I figured this is going to be the car that I'm going to plan on keeping longer than the wagon. So maybe the wagon will just get uh, non-poly bushings in that area right there. And going farther forward from here. The front bushings for the trailing arms. Let's see if I can't get a decent shot of those. Yeah, I really can't get in there very well. They look very nice. And when I talked to my friend Michael, who was the guy that helped me get a lead on this, he goes, it's your carrier bearing. And I'd be honest, or to be honest, I didn't 100% believe him. I would have assumed one of these bushings was junk, but... After doing a little bit of digging, this thing definitely does have some good amount of some good amount of play. It's a little bit difficult for me to do this at the same time, but there's definitely a lot of up and down play in here. So I'm gonna order a bushing kit for this, or I, I should say a carrier bearing kit, because I think it's only like 25 bucks on IPD's website or something like that for that, so it's pretty cheap. Um, another little fix I quick did was the pipe right here. You can see it's got a crack in it, it had popped out and made my exhaust loud. So I took some pry bars and got a shoved her back in there, so I may lay a quick bead of Q-Bond or something like that on there and kind of shut that up a skoosh, so it's quiet for now. So, I guess let's knock out those things next and then maybe, just maybe, I'll do a fuel filter for fun because I know I have a few and who knows how old this fuel filter is. So, I guess camera angles that are crappy are over for a few moments. Yay! Well, about a little bit further of inspection, um, these panhard bushings are actually not too terrible, and they're OEM Volvo. There's a little bit of cracking on them, but 
If I put a bolt inside of them, it's probably gonna be a little bit difficult to do with one hand. Um, there's really no, really no play in them. There's a little bit, but not much. And over here, the bushing's a little bit rougher, but this one looks super nice and there's really no play. So I don't know what I was finding. Uh, turns out I'm just a moron. That ain't a surprise. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, put that back in and pretend that we never did that. You know, I could edit this out of the video and you guys would totally never know and think I'm like, you know, super smart, but ah, we'll just put it back in. Look at that, it's done. All right, well, one super exciting thing did show up today, and that is the lower chassis braces. Super stoked about this. I'm gonna finally get these on. These are from Yoshi Fab. Been waiting on these for a little while. Uh, I ended up ordering a couple of other different things from him that he, he was waiting on some materials for. So, I'm gonna throw these things on. Um, I probably should check what size sockets and fasteners I need for this, but I'll just figure it out when I get underneath there, because why would I check now? That would be dumb, so. Let's go. I think I might change the engine and transmission mounts while I'm in there too because this engine is a little bit loose and this trans mount's not great either. So might knock those out today too while I'm at it. We'll see how I'm feeling. But anyway, let's uh, crawl underneath here. This is the part where I definitely should have listened to myself and actually checked because uh, it is not the same Allen on the front and the rear. It is a 10 millimeter Allen for the main bolt in the back and a, I want to say a six millimeter for the front and a 13 millimeter wrench. So I had to dig around for a little while and thumbed around and thought I could make it work, but turns out I couldn't. So definitely listen to uh, yourself when you figure you should check tools ahead of time. Little life bro tip for me to you. You're welcome. PD kit here. This is uh, all of like four dollars more than just this bushing is on Rock Auto. So score, shout out to IPD, and it includes the bearing. Don't know if I'm gonna replace the bearing yet, but we're gonna go ahead and split this thing apart and see how everything looks. Right meow. I think first I'm gonna probably do some markings. 
see where everything goes. I know there's a slip joint in here. Yep. So I'm gonna go like these, and then like these. God, this paint marker is terrible. That's what I get for using a paint marker that I accidentally borrowed from work like six months ago and it's been sitting in a drawer so I'm like myself I'd bring it back every day and I don't. This is my punishment. Anyway, so I'm going to orientate where this goes too. So this is going to be, see that's the rear. And this is going to be the front. So I'm fairly certain these things are an orientation to them, but I'm not a hundred percent positive. So we're gonna go ahead and do that the way I know which what where goes why. It's really don't want to scratch up this surface. Yep, there's spines in there, like I thought. There we go. All right, that grease on there, it's not particularly great, but let's pop. Look at that. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up very well. Let's see if I can get a light of flashing in here. Look at that. That bushing is toast. Wow. Well, let's go ahead and get around the get around. Whew, all right, well, I had to pause the video there and take a five minute break and uh, do a little bit of Google food to make sure I wasn't doing this wrong. Cause, uh, well, I'm not gonna admit how long it took me to get this thing on here, but uh, it wasn't 27 minutes exactly. So it was not that time, it was totally under that. So yeah, it was totally easy, not even a sweat. Like it's only like 87 in here and I'm sweating to death. Totally gravy. So now that I finally got this done, I'm going to slap it back underneath the car and then I uh, think I should be pretty well done. Shiny new carrier bearing bushing. Not bearing, just bushing. Whatever. Well, I figured I'd save you guys the boringness of me reinstalling the drive shaft. And, uh, well, that's really about it for today, I suppose. As much as I'd love to kind of hang out here for a few more hours to get a few more things done, like the uh, engine mounts and rebuild the struts to get the tires and everything painted, I really got to hit the road for uh, Rust Belt Ramble. So I got to get packing. Go uh, check the fluids and get everything in the car that I'm going to probably never need. And all the things that I won't need, I'm going to leave here. And uh, whatever not. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, keep an eye out for the next video of this thing. I'll probably do the strut rebuild. I'll probably paint the wheels, get some tires mounted to mount to those. And I'm hoping at some point this year to take it out for autocross. I've never done any autocross in my entire life. And I figured this would be a great car to try it out on. Um, I'm contemplating running IPD lowering springs and a couple other little doodads and gizmos and things like that. But I think I'm just going to run it as it is with some uh, decent tires on it. And uh, see what happens. I'm probably going to get lost. I'm probably going to look like an idiot. But I've never done it. I've always wanted to. So I think it'll be a ton of fun. Um, I'm definitely going to uh, enjoy driving this car once I get a little bit more done. I'm going to hit IPD up here pretty soon and get a few more things ordered. But that won't be for a few more weeks yet because uh, other stuff, life, lemons rallies, you know how it goes. So, and again, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.